Eduardo Molinari has endured a testing time on tour in recent years. Once in the world's top 20, the Italian struggles saw him plummet outside the top 1,000. However, a win in Morocco last year showed that things were on the up. Anna spoke to him in Abu Dhabi about his recent return to form. Eduardo, you have been on quite the journey, shall we say, over the last six, seven years. You've had such highs and such lows, but last year you are now back in the winner's circle, which I guess has hugely changed how you see your future now on the European Tour. Well, yeah, it was uh, fantastic because, uh, as you say, after you know, a few injuries and a few bad years, mm -hmm. it was great to, to come back and to win a European Tour event. Mm -hmm. And that obviously changed everything because all of a sudden I went from having a Q School category, which is not ideal, yeah. to having access to all the Rolex Series events, all the, the bigger events like Abu Dhabi and Dubai. Mm -hmm. And so that, that helped a lot. It was your first win on tour since 2010, and it obviously meant so much to you, but coming down that final stretch, you pulled out a terrific performance, and then to go into a sudden death playoff. How were you feeling over those final nine holes? Uh, I was feeling quite confident and uh, excited because uh, after a long time, as you said, I was playing some, some good golf, and uh, historically, I've always been very good under pressure and very good down the last uh, few holes on Sunday. I remember saying to Andy, my caddy, after I hold the putt for eagle on 12, I was still one or two behind, and I said to him, I think uh, we're going to have a, a good finish here. Yeah. And that's what I did. Well, we're out here at the beginning of the 2018 season. Does it feel like a fresh start and almost it just allows you to play with so much more freedom now, I imagine. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you have a category for at least two years mm -hmm. and you can play every single event you want. You can pick your schedule, you can pick your weeks off and that uh, helps massively, uh, definitely. To have had such a good year in 2010, two wins, Ryder Cup, to then fall off the grid a bit and to be back at Q School, what kind of a journey is that? Unless you're a professional golfer, you can't imagine how tough that is. It's very tough, as you say, because uh, you know you go from Ryder Cup and playing the majors, WGCs, and playing everything you want, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you're struggling to to have a job. Yeah. So it's uh, it was very difficult, especially the first time I played Q School. I was uh, struggling badly with my game, and to be able to to get my card after six rounds was uh, a little bit of a relief. Mm -hmm. Even though I didn't keep the card the year after, but it gave me a little bit of confidence that even if my game wasn't hundred percent. I could still compete. And then one year later, my game started to turn a corner and I started to play better, hit the ball better. Yeah. And eventually it came the win last year. Yeah. I know you said you have grinded so hard on the range. You put so <laughs> many hours into your game. What do you think you've learned about yourself as a result of going through those low times? Well, you learn a lot. Uh, first of all, you learn that uh, nothing changes from one day to the other. It takes time, so you yeah. have to be very patient because sometimes when you make a swing change or when you're working on something, you might not see the results immediately. Mm -hmm. You definitely not see the results immediately, most of the times. But if you keep working on the same things, you could keep um, believing that you can do it, then in the end you can, you can turn things around. And every player, of course, goes through those high points. We saw it with Danny Willett winning the Masters and then he struggled a bit afterwards. Do you almost appreciate the wins more when you've been through something like that? Absolutely, absolutely. It felt like uh, winning three majors in a, in a row, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, you go from feeling that you, you almost cannot make a cut to then you start making some cuts, you see some progress, and then all of a sudden you win an event and that's like, you know, over the moon. Yeah. Have you got a plan for this year or are you just kind of enjoying yourself and just feeling more confident? Well, the, the plan is to improve on my performances last year. Uh, after I won Morocco, I had, a, again, a little bit of a difficult spell. But I'm, I'm starting to play much better now. I'm, I had a very good um, sessions over the winter. And uh, hopefully I can, I can build on last year and I can finish maybe at least top 60 this year in the yeah. race to Dubai and then keep building on that. OK, good stuff. Well, we're at your ball, so we'll catch up with you after you've hit your second shot. Thank you. <laughs> So I imagine a real highlight for you across your career has been the Ryder Cup. You've experienced the unbelievable highs of that. I imagine it's a huge goal for you to get back into the team, especially 2022 going to Italy. Yeah, that would be a dream come true because uh, playing a Ryder Cup, it's uh, the best experience a golfer can have. Uh, it's something very unique. 
and uh, to be able to play in 2022 20, would be fantastic. When you look back at your time in the Ryder Cup so far, what's been your real standout moment for you? I think uh, it was the first tee with Francesco. Mm -hmm. uh, we played uh, foursomes in the afternoon and uh, it was a poor day. Uh, the weather was cold, it was uh, raining a little bit. And uh, we walked onto the tee and thinking that there won't be a lot of people on because there were still a lot of games playing in the morning, the last few holes. And then all of a sudden we turned the corner, we got onto the, the first tee and there were probably 10,000 people sitting and, and screaming and shouting. And yeah. it was, it's something that you can't even imagine being possible on a golf course. It felt more like a football stadium or something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's something that you know gave us. It still gives me goose, goosebumps uh, today. So yeah. it was uh, it was fantastic. It was something unique. A very proud moment for the Molinari brothers. It must be nice having a, your brother out on tour with you. I imagine. Yeah, it is. Even though Francesco now plays most of his golf in America, mm -hmm. uh, anytime he's over here, we try and play practice on together. And uh, even if we are away, I mean, we always chat on on the phone and on text messages. Yeah. And it's it's great to have someone to ask questions, to you know, ask for advice, and just uh, exchange opinions. And you know, I've, I've been fortunate enough to have such a, a good brother, mm -hmm. and uh, we've always had a great relationship, and it's helped a lot both of us. Yeah. Well, Eduardo, enjoy your 2018 season. It is great to see you Thank back you, in the winner's circle. Thank you. So it's a joy every second of it. Thank, Thank you. you, Eduardo Thanks. Molinari.